How's it going everybody? Too spooky here. A long time ago during my celebration week for 25,000 subscribers, I made a video counting down 25 facts about My Hero Academia. And frankly, that video is absolute trash. trash. So with Season 3 of My Hero Academia dropping recently, I felt like it was the appropriate time to leave that video in the dust by counting down 101 facts about My Hero Academia. So I don't overlap comments from the previous video, I'm only including suggestions from the last year. But this video was suggested by... these lovely people. Thank you all so much for the suggestion, and I really hope you enjoy because this one is going out to you. Before we hop in, I also wanted to warn you that my pronunciation of different names and phrases is also complete garbage, and there will likely be a few spoilers throughout the video for both anime and manga, so you've been warned. Without further ado, let's hop in. Number 1. My Hero Academia, or Boku no Hero Academia, is a manga and anime series that was created by Kohei Horikoshi. The manga made its debut on July 7th of 2014, and it is currently ongoing in Weekly Shonen Jump. As of recording this video, there are currently 18 volumes, consisting of 179 chapters. Number 2. Before My Hero Academia, Horikoshi previously worked on his other series, Omogadoki Zoo and Barrage, along with a few other one-shots. Number 3. Horikoshi's dream was to have a long-running serialization in Shonen Jump. However, unfortunately for Horikoshi, that dream was seemingly crushed, after his second series Barrage was cancelled after such a short serialization. This ended up sending him into a bit of a depression. Because he was in such a sad and depressed state of being, he wanted to focus the happy aspects of his previous works into whatever new manga he decided to create. Which is when he thought back to a one-shot he created back in 2008 called My Hero, which he made a few years before his first serialization. This one-shot was essentially My Hero Academia before My Hero Academia, and contained a lot of elements from what would later become what we know as My Hero Academia. Horikoshi thought back to how happy he was while he created that one-shot, and decided to build off of it for his next manga, which would of course later become My Hero Academia. Number 4. The My Hero one-shot does have quite a few differences from what would later become the main series, but the biggest difference was the fact that the one-shot centered around an adult named Jack Midoriya. When Horikoshi began reinventing the one-shot into the full-fledged manga, he didn't think he'd be able to get back into Shonen Jump with an older protagonist, because the audience for Shonen Jump are generally younger, and therefore would not relate with an older protagonist. So Horikoshi decided to change the setting to a school, and reinvented Jack into who we now know as Izuku Midoriya. And the rest is history. Number 5. Horikoshi has stated that one of the reasons he decided on a school setting is because he absolutely loves origin stories, specifically seeing how an aspiring hero learns how to become a hero, and all the different things a hero must learn and deal with along the way. He's also stated that the only issue with a school setting is the fact that it limits the overall scope of the series, due to the difficulty of adding different potential storylines. Number 6. The manga was eventually adapted into an anime series that is still currently ongoing. In fact, as of this month, the third season just started airing. The first episode of the anime officially aired on April 3rd of 2016. However, even though the anime first aired in 2016, the anime was greenlit for development before the manga was even a full year old. Number 7. Apparently, Horikoshi first heard about the series being adapted into an anime during a casual meeting he has weekly with his editor. Because the news was dropped so casually, it took a few days before the exciting news really sunk in for Horikoshi. Number 8. It's no secret that My Hero Academia was heavily inspired by American superhero comics and movies, but the biggest inspiration came from Spider-Man. To Horikoshi, Spider-Man is what comes to his mind when thinking of what it truly means to be a hero. You see, to Horikoshi, a hero is someone who helps and brings reassurance to others, which to him is what Spider-Man is all about, and he built My Hero Academia around this philosophy. The fact that Spider-Man is also a teenager helps fit that school setting as well. Number 9. 
As of 2017, My Hero Academia has currently sold over 10 million copies. Considering we're in 2018 now, and the series just keeps getting increasingly more popular, that number is likely getting close to doubling if it hasn't already. Number 10! When Horikoshi first heard that the series was going to be published overseas, he didn't really think anyone outside of Japan would enjoy it. Luckily for him though, My Hero Academia is a huge success overseas, even though Horikoshi still isn't convinced that everyone over here actually enjoys it. Number 11. Before Horikoshi created any one-shots or anything like that, Horikoshi's first manga debut was actually in a One Piece art segment called Usopp Gallery Pirates. Horikoshi submitted a postcard of Smoker that actually ended up getting published in Volume 23 of One Piece back in 2002. And with an interesting turn of events, Horikoshi's manga is now getting published right alongside One Piece in Weekly Shonen Jump. Number 12. Some of Horikoshi's favorite manga series and inspirations include Dragon Ball, Tekken Concrete, Naruto, One Piece, Boys on the Run, and Akira. Number 13. Before Horikoshi was creating his own manga, he was formerly an assistant for Yasuki Tanaka, who is the creator of the manga series Hitomi no Katoblepis and Keigijin. Number 14. Because Shonen Jump is a weekly publication, there's almost always a new My Hero Academia chapter every week. When it comes to Horikoshi's creative process, he spends most of his time working on the storyboarding, which he said can sometimes take up to six days. After that, he spends about a whole day on the final art. Which, if you think about it, it's honestly insane that he's able to draw a whole chapter in a single day. Although he also mentioned it's not like he isn't working on some of the art throughout the storyboarding, but either way, his creative drive is absolutely bonkers. Number 15. Apparently, Horikoshi began the series already knowing how it was going to begin, and along with everything that needed to happen in between. Of course, different things throughout the series will be tweaked and expanded upon, but it's just interesting to know that the end of the series has already been decided. In August of 2016, a spin-off prequel series began that is called My Hero Academia Vigilantes. The series isn't written by Horikoshi, and is instead written by Hayuki Furuhashi, and illustrated by Betten Court. So far it's received good reception due to its darker tone compared to the main series, along with receiving Horikoshi's seal of approval. Number 17. Later this year on August 3rd, a My Hero Academia movie is going to be released called My Hero Academia The Movie, The Two Heroes. Not much is known about the film at this moment, but what we do know is that it will be an original story that takes place after the manga's final exam arc. Number 18. So far there have been two video games based on the series. The first was released only in Japan for the 3DS, which was called My Hero Academia Battle for All. The second game has not yet been released, but it will be called My Hero Academia One's Justice, which will be released at some point in 2018 for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, and Nintendo Switch. Number 19. When it comes to those nasty cliffhangers at the end of a chapter, Horikoshi has stated that he tries his best to avoid them whenever possible, because if the cliffhanger doesn't have that great of a payoff for the reader, he feels they won't enjoy the following chapter. Number 20. During the process of adapting Jack Midoriya into Izuku Midoriya, he went through a few different changes. First of all, before his name was officially Izuku Midoriya, his working title was Makumo Akatani, and before that, it was Yumi Kumo. Appearance-wise, he does look pretty similar to the finalized Izuku, but with longer hair that covers one of his eyes. The longer hairdo was apparently scrapped because instead of looking more serious like Horikoshi intended, he just looked like he needed a haircut. This concept also has Mikumo being quirkless like Izuku, but instead of later receiving a quirk, he instead relied heavily on his own luck and assorted gadgetry. As we've seen in some of the latest chapters with Izuku Don some gauntlets to assist with his powers, it looks like part of this concept is going full circle. Number 21. 
Before All Might became the mentor and symbol of peace that he was meant to be, he was originally meant to play a much lesser role than he would end up playing later on. In the early versions of All Might, he was meant to be a much older veteran hero who would only appear in the beginning of the story to convince Izuku or Mikumo to become a hero even though they didn't have a quirk. Number 22. In addition to the last fact, All Might was also the character who went through the most design changes over the course of the series' creation. Apparently, no matter how he was drawn, everyone Horikoshi showed the designs to only saw All Might as just some old guy and didn't really notice anything special about him. Even though this would normally demotivate someone, Horikoshi used this criticism to improve All Might by constantly tweaking the design. Little would he or anyone else know, All Might would become a fan favorite and in my opinion, one of the best anime characters to date. Number 23! When it comes to Bakugo, he was originally supposed to be a completely different character in terms of personality. Originally, Bakugo was supposed to be a genius, who was extremely kind and gentle towards others. However, he would have been slightly socially awkward in the sense that he would unintentionally say things that were very hurtful to others. Appearance-wise, he was pretty much the same though. Horikoshi later decided that this version of Bakugo would be too boring, so instead he decided to make him the arrogant asshat that he is today. Number 24. In addition to the last fact, Bakugo's asshat personality was actually based off of one of Horikoshi's other characters from his previous manga, Omogadoki Zoo. The character in question was the lion Shishido, who also had a similar personality, but Horikoshi took it to the next level with Bakugo. Number 25. One of Horikoshi's favorite things to do, and also most difficult things to do, is name his characters. Mainly because their names usually carry some sort of hint towards the individual's quirk, a pun, or some other characteristic about the character within the kanji in their names. Number 26. Horikoshi also likes to give little detailed backgrounds about his side characters within the manga. For instance, the newscaster who briefly appeared is named Daikaku Miyagi. You may have noticed that he only has one horn, and that's because he is so dedicated to the news that he ended up cutting one of them off so that it no longer interfered with the camera work behind him. This actually led to a controversy of many people praising him for his dedication, and others claiming that what he did was a form of quirk discrimination. Yet, to this day, he is still delivering the news to his loyal viewers. Number 27. Aside from Izuku, the only character from the original My Hero one-shot to make it into the main series with little to no changes was the hero Snipe. Number 28. When it comes to Ida, he went through two different designs mainly because he was one of the last characters created. Specifically, he was created in the final stages of serialization. His first concept was back before a school setting was even decided, and it is vastly different from the Ida we know today. He was completely ripped, and wearing some sort of dinosaur or skeleton mask. And his second concept was still vastly different from his final appearance, looking a lot more like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Number 29. When it came to the anime's release, the thing Horikoshi was most looking forward to was the action scenes. Mainly because he had received criticism that some of his action scenes were a bit hard to follow in the manga, so he figured the anime would do a better job showing what is actually going on. Number 30. Suyu, Toru, and Mei were all originally supposed to be male characters, but Horikoshi wanted to create more diversity within the cast because he was lacking female characters, so he ended up gender swapping each of them. In the end, he's very happy with his decision. And so am I. Carl, what the hell are you wearing? Well, I'm cosplaying as Minita. I figured it'd be pretty fitting for the video topic. I understand that. It just threw me off a little bit because that sounds exactly like something Minita would have said. Well, not to toot my own horn, but I'm a Method cosplayer. Okay then. Number 31. The Hero 13 was introduced in Chapter 13 on Page 13. Oh God! What? This fact was Fact 31, and if you flip the numbers of 31 around, you get 13. Number 32. 
Out of all the characters, Horikoshi thinks that Fumikage is the coolest. But within the story itself, Fumikage doesn't come across as cool to most people. Number 33. In 2017, the manga won both the Sugoi Japan Award and the Japan Expo Awards. Number 34. The first three characters to be developed for the story were Izuku, Bakugo, and Uraraka, making them the main character trio. But Prince Zuko, uh, I mean Todoroki, was created right after them. Number 35! When it comes to the anime, the average episode of My Hero Academia takes around 7,500 to 8,000 unique drawings. For comparison, most other anime take around 4,000 or 5,000 unique drawings. So this explains why the anime is just so damn clean. Number 36. Daiki Yamashita, who is Izuku's Japanese voice actor, was originally part of the VC or voice comic reading before the official cast for the anime was decided. He of course ended up moving on to officially play Izuku, but the main reason for this is because Horikoshi originally didn't have any voice for Izuku in mind, but after hearing Daiki play Izuku, he couldn't imagine any other voice for him. Number 37. In the first chapter of My Hero Academia, while explaining how heroes came to be, the silhouettes of popular heroes from other comics can be seen, such as the Japanese hero Ultraman, Superman, Wolverine, and of course, Spider-Man. Number 38. As far as we know, a pro hero's popularity ranking goes up to at least 10 heroes. So far, out of the top 10 most popular, we know the following. Gang Orca is number 10, Ryukyu is number 9, Edshot is number 5, Best Genist is number 4, Endeavor is number 2, and then All Might was of course number 1. Number 39! While the students were looking at possible hero agencies to intern for, on Todoroki's paper at the very bottom, one of the offices is called the Kael Hero Office, which is of course a reference to Superman. Number 40. Ashido's original design was very similar to her final design, aside from being a little bit skinnier and having much longer, curvier horns. The longer horns in particular were apparently scrapped because they were too difficult to consistently draw. Number 41! Despite seeming like a very manly hero, Gunhead apparently has a really girly voice, and he also really enjoys skincare products. Number 42. Minita's original design was almost exactly the same as it is now, the only difference being that his hero costume had a stem-looking object on his head, making him seem more like a human grapevine. Number 43! Mount Lady can grow up to 68 feet tall. Number 44. Not too much is mentioned about the geography of the My Hero Academia world, but it's hinted that it's pretty much the same as our world. This conclusion is reached mainly because Japan, Thailand, China, and America have all been mentioned as countries within this universe. Number 45! Although pretty much everyone in class 1A are the same age at this point, the youngest in the class by birth date is Shoji, while Bakugo is the oldest. Number 46. Gran Torino's hero name was likely inspired by the movie Gran Torino that was created by Clint Eastwood. If you haven't seen it already, it's a great movie, you should go check it out. Number 47. Midnight was originally meant to be the homeroom teacher for class 1A. However, Horikoshi ended up drawing her way too sexual and felt she would no longer be appropriate for that role. Her costume was also slightly different in her early drafts. Number 48. In a chapter extra, we learned that Present Mike was the one who came up with Eraserhead's hero name. Also, if you didn't know already, those two were in the same graduating class. Number 49. If it wasn't obvious already, All Might was heavily designed after your classic American comic book heroes. To add on to this inspiration, Horikoshi has made sure that all of All Might's signature moves are named after various states from America, including the United States of Smash. Number 50. So far, there have been three official different character popularity polls. The first poll saw Izuku in first, Todoroki in second, and Bakugo in third place. However, the next two polls shifted, as Bakugo rose to first place, while Izuku became second, and Todoroki became third for both of the latest polls. Number 51. In addition to that last fact, Horikoshi was actually very surprised with Bakugo's popularity, mainly because he intentionally made Bakugo a jerk 
work, and thought that most people would naturally hate him because of that. Number 52. Before Denki was officially created as a character, his original design looked much different from what he would later become, with much spikier hair and a more sinister appearance. However, this concept was just a random electricity user at the time, and it wasn't until much later that this concept became the basis for Denki's future character. Number 53. While present Mike is explaining the point system in the UA entrance exam, in the manga, different assorted Mario character silhouettes can be seen to describe the points. However, in the anime, this was simply changed to the robots in the exam to avoid copyright. Number 54. Suyu's appearance was originally much less frog-like in the manner that her face and eyes were much smaller. This concept also made it seem like she was originally meant to be a more docile, submissive, and quiet character. Number 55. According to the official My Hero Academia Twitter, Tsukauchi has a codename within the police force, which is True Man, likely stemming from his lie detector quirk. Number 56. Toru's original costume was supposed to have a little bit more than just boots and gloves. In the original design, she was also supposed to be wearing some sort of smiley face mask, along with having some sort of mirror-like objects attached to her gloves. Number 57. The UA motto, plus ultra, is actually Latin for further beyond. Number 58. Shoji's full face has yet to be revealed in the series, and it's unknown if we'll ever get to see it. However, in some of his concept art, we got a glimpse of what could possibly be his full face. Number 59. Sato's regular design and costume design are based off of both Kinnikuman and Silver Age comic heroes. Number 60. In the original concept of the series, Endeavor was going to be an instructor at UA, but this was scrapped for a better series dynamic and to shift the balance of power away from the protagonists. Number 61. We currently know barely anything about Izuku's father, but since he's such a mystery, let's go over what we do know. His name is Hisashi Midoriya, and his quirk is apparently breathing fire. We know that at some point he married Izuku's mother because they share the same last name, and in a chapter extra, we also learned that the reason he isn't around is because he works abroad, but that's it. Number 62. Jiro is currently the only character in the series who was revealed to have the same exact quirk as one of her parents, which is the earphone jack quirk that she shares with her mother. There are similar examples like Todoroki having a flame quirk like his father and Suyu having a frog quirk like her parents and siblings, but like Todoroki and many other characters, their powers were developed through a mixture of powers and as far as Suyu goes, her parents' quirks have not yet been officially named to confirm if they are indeed the same frog quirk that Suyu has, or perhaps if they are some other other variant. Number 63. Horikoshi has stated that Himiko Toga is currently the hardest female character for him to draw, mainly because of her eyes and hair. Number 64. Tomura was originally going to have a much creepier face underneath that hand. Not that it isn't creepy already, but instead of eyes or a mouth, they would have instead just been empty black holes. Kind of like something from Hunter x Hunter. Number 65. Horikoshi has stated that both Kirishima and Denki were created to tie the class together with their personalities. Number 66. According to Horikoshi, Nato is one of the few characters whom he based off of a person he knows in real life. Number 67. When dealing with so many different characters and forming their personalities out of his own imagination, it's only natural that Horikoshi isn't going to resonate or understand all of them. But one character he openly admits to not understanding at all is Aoyama, but he enjoys drawing him, so he claims it's not so bad. Number 68. Although it may not seem like it because almost everyone we meet these days has a quirk, 20% of the world's population is still quirkless, which although that is the minority, Minority, it's still quite a lot of people if My Hero Academia's population is anything like ours. Number 69. In the early versions of the series, Mount Lady was originally going to be in Uraraka's place as the main female character, or at the very least, Uraraka would be the same appearance-wise, but her quirk would have been gigantification. However, Horikoshi later felt that her quirk was too flashy to fill that role, so it was later replaced with zero gravity. Number 70. The villain Stain is likely derived and inspired appearance-wise from both the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the anti-hero Spawn. 
But personally, I've always thought he looked like Insaniac from the Small Soldiers, but maybe that's just me. Number 71. Momo's original design was pretty much the same as she is now, but her hero costume's original design was slightly different. Instead of an opening down the center, it was instead exposing her entire stomach and part of her legs, along with the addition of a small mask over her nose. Number 72. Present Mike was originally going to be your average old guy announcer, but Horikoshi thought that would be a bit too boring, so he redesigned him into the upbeat version we have today. Number 73. It was mentioned pretty early on that four students made it into UA through a scholarship recommendation. So far, we know that three of these students were Momo, Todoroki, and Juzo, but the fourth and final student is still unknown. Number 74. In addition to that last fact, at UA each class is only supposed to have 18 students. However, if you didn't notice, both class 1A and class 1B have 20 students. Well, Horikoshi confirmed for us that the reason for this is because the students who got into the school via recommendation are not counted in that lineup. So that pretty much confirms that the final student who got in on recommendation is in class 1B. Number 75! The English voice actor for 13, Morgan Berry, confirmed for us that 13 is androgynous, which means that they identify as partly male and partly female, but 13's actual gender by birth is currently unknown. I'm sorry to say it too spooky, but this fact is false! Because there are only two genders. Actually, Bane, there's three. Male, female, and towel. So, you're a towel. No, you're a towel! <sighs> Number 76. To continue on the gender train, there have, so far, been two confirmed transgender characters. The first is Yawara Chatora of the Pussycats, who actually had full-on sex reassignment surgery over in Thailand to transition from female to male. Yes, that is confirmed to have actually happened. And the second character was the villain Magna, who was a transgender female. Number 77. At one point in the series, the students point out that All Might is wearing a Silver Age costume, which is a reference to what is known as the Silver Age of comics, which took place from 1956 to 1970. Number 78. Endeavor's blood type is AB, while Todoroki's blood type is O. The reason that I bring this up is because apparently it's genetically impossible for an AB blood type to produce offspring with an O blood type, unless Endeavor has a very rare genetic mutation known as cis AB. Considering the whole concept of quirks came about through natural evolution, I think it makes perfect sense in the series for other genetic mutations to have also occurred, such as this. Number 79. In addition to that last fact, Todoroki also has another genetic mutation called heterochromia, which is where an individual or animal has two completely different colored eyes. In Todoroki's case, he has one light blue eye like his father and one gray eye like his mother. Number 80. When it comes to the character Horikoshi relates to the most, he claims it has to be Izuku, mainly because he cries easily and cowers, but in that regard, Horikoshi claims that the two are very similar. Number 81. It is still unknown if Principal Nezu is a dog, a mouse, or a bear, or a mixture of all three. Number 82! In chapter 34 of the manga, there's one panel where we can see the Flash from DC Comics sitting in the stands cheering Todoroki on. Number 83. Back in 2016, an anime cafe in Japan did a collaboration with the series and provided My Hero Academia themed food for a limited time. The possible items included Izuku's Katsudan, All Might's Smash Soda, and Uraraka Ochiko's Sticky Chewy Zero Gravity Parfait. With every purchase during this limited time, customers were also given a randomly selected My Hero Academia themed coaster. Number 84. Then again in 2017, that anime cafe came back with a another collaboration centering around the sports festival. The dishes available included UA Sports Festival Gold Medal Pasta, All Might's Bento, Ochiko's Meteor Shower Iced Tea, and Stun Grenade, Katsuki's Flashing Lemonade. If this continues, maybe we'll see another collaboration for Season 3 this year. Number 85. 
Even though Horikoshi's first serialization, Omogadoki Zoo, was cancelled pretty early on, some of the characters from that manga later made an appearance in My Hero Academia. The character who plays a bigger role is Uwabami, who was later added to My Hero Academia with the same appearance and name. However, other characters from Umagadoki Zoo, such as Toy Toy, have made cameo appearances. Number 86. When it came to marketing the Star Wars movie The Last Jedi in Japan, Horikoshi was actually asked to create some promotional art for the film. More recently, another marketing collaboration was done to help market Avengers Infinity War to Japanese audiences. This time, the anime character designer Yoshihiko Umakoshi drew many of the My Hero Academia characters in a very similar pose to the recently released Infinity War promotional poster. Number 87. On the topic of Star Wars, there are also a few different Star Wars related easter eggs and inspirations throughout the series. For a few examples, some of the locations at the beginning of the series are named after different planets in the Star Wars universe, such as Dagobah Municipal Beach Park, where All Might began his training with Izuku, along with Tatooine Station which appeared at the very beginning of the series. Number 88 when it comes to the actual Star Wars inspiration, the most popular example would be All For One's Black Mask, along with his life support system being very similar to Darth Vader, and Mirio also has a special move called Phantom Menace, which is named after Star Wars Episode One. Number 89. When Horikoshi was asked how he's able to keep drawing manga every week, he stated that it's not so bad if you enjoy what you're drawing, which in his case, he enjoys drawing superheroes. Number 90. The character Bubble Girl was actually created by a fan rather than by Horikoshi. At one point, a hero design contest was held and Bubble Girl was picked as the winner, which meant she would be added to the series. Number 91! Apparently, Tamaki's anxiety problem is based on a real-life situation Horikoshi went through, which was attending Jump Festa 2017 and having to go on stage for a huge crowd of people and fans. It was just very nerve-wracking for him. Number 92. At one point, Himiko Toga is seen wearing a gas mask that has a striking resemblance to a certain villain from The Dark Knight Rises. Why the hell are you looking at me? Wait, is that my waifu? I will have you someday, my love. Mark my words. Number 93. The city of Yokohama in My Hero Academia's Japan has a small area called Kamino. This is actually another reference to Star Wars and also a hint of what was going on there. Kamino was the planet where clone troopers were being created, and in My Hero Academia, Kamino was the area where All for One was creating his various Nomu. So if you understood the reference, you could have learned that possibility ahead of time. Number 94. In an interview with Horikoshi back in 2017, he hinted that he Toshi is likely going to have some interesting development in the near future. Number 95. Shiozaki was originally going to be a member of Class 1A, but at some point Horikoshi moved her over to Class 1B. Apparently, he has no recollection of the reason why he moved her though. Number 96! Horikoshi has stated that he really enjoys drawing Denki, among other characters. But the only problem with drawing Denki is that he can never seem to draw his hair consistently, meaning that it's always slightly different in each of his appearances. Number 97. Aside from being the fourth most popular hero, Best Genist runs the fashion industry that is marketed towards young and adult men. He is also extremely popular within this fashion industry, which could be why he is such a high-ranking hero. Number 98. In a teaser for the upcoming My Hero Academia movie, we get to see a younger All Might- MY GOD! I'm honestly not sure how I feel about it, it's almost unnatural at this point. Number 99! When asked about the possibility of a time skip, Horikoshi explained that at some point he does intend to have a time skip for the series, but I already talked quite a bit about this time skip in a separate video I made about Izuku, so if you want to know more about it, be sure to check it out after this video is over. Number 100. When it comes to why My Hero Academia is so popular overseas, there's really no definite answer, other than it may have something to do with how superhero crazy we are right now, but the mangaka who wrote Naruto, Kishi 
Nishimoto, is not only a big supporter of My Hero Academia, but he also believed it would be pretty popular overseas, especially because Naruto Shippuden ended right around the time My Hero Academia began, along with the Naruto Shippuden anime ending shortly after My Hero Academia's anime began. So it's pretty safe to say that My Hero Academia fit right into the void that Naruto left behind, taking all that potential popularity with it. And the moment that you've all been waiting for, number 101. Back in 2016, Horikoshi mentioned that the series was about 20% complete at the time. Considering the series has been ongoing since 2014, that means the rate of completion is about 10% per year, give or take. So now in 2018, if this assumption is correct, the series is about 40% complete right now. This also means that if the series continues to complete about 10% of the story per year, the series will likely be ending in 2024. This is of course assuming that Horikoshi doesn't take a big hiatus, doesn't add a lot more than he intended to the story, and the serialization continues to its intended completion without cancellation. So with all that in mind, at the very least it's likely we'll all still be reading and watching My Hero Academia well into the 2020s. But there you have it everybody, 101 facts about My Hero Academia. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one and hopefully you learned something new. If you did, make sure to United States of SMASH that like button! Because if you do, there's a point zero 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 seventy eight percent chance that you will receive your very own quirk. The chances are slim, but you don't want to miss out on an opportunity like that, do you? Also be sure to subscribe subscribe and hit that bell for more videos, and while you're at it, comment below what anime you would like to learn about next. I just wanted to thank you guys ahead of time for checking this video out and staying until the end. I spent a lot of time on this video in terms of research and editing to bring you guys nothing but the best. So the support really means a lot. Also thank you guys for 220,000 subscribers. You guys are absolutely unreal and I hope to keep bringing you some quality videos well into the future. But anyways, if you cannot get enough too spooky content, be sure to click here for 10 facts about Izuku Midoriya, otherwise click here for 101 facts about the seven deadly sins or 101 facts about dragon ball z thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you all soon with a new video